are alive today. I needed to get a place to put the leaves. We are doing a bit of cloning today. Let me know if you can hear me. If you can't hear me, I got a fan right above my head, so I understand if you can't hear me. Give you guys some time to get on here. And then, let's see what we got. Look, people underestimate, you know, the, the skill is, that's required to cultivate clean or medical grade cannabis. However, the skill required to put gloves on after your hands have started to sweat, that's a skill. I admire people with those skills. Can you hear me? Hang on, we're telling people about your video. It is 1042. It's 1042. Beauty Illusions Co. What's going on? We got some cloning happening today. Make sure I can wave. Hey, hey. Say what's up. Let me know what state you're in. What's going on, Brother Liberation? We got some uh, some cloning going in today. We got a, a few we're going to... We got our... Uh, our clones, freshly taken clones. What's going on, Don? Cannabis advocate. Hello, hello. Uh, if you're just now tuning in, again, we're just we're getting some cloning in today. Um, and I, I saw some education online, and I wanted to kind of share with you guys that very same education. Hopefully, you can hear me. Type one if you can hear me. I know. I know that I am remiss in not getting on here. And um, Ruben Ibarra, que pasó? Oh, the Lou, what's going on Lou? Hold on, sorry, I got my little, these are what they're gonna go in. I like beakers because nerd stuff. I don't know. What's going on Skyline School, North Carolina? Yo, Skyline School, so. Uh, you're, you're actually getting ahead of me with your whole name and everything and your very existence. But anyway, uh, so so I was I was listening to a podcast today, and the podcast was talking about industry, and that made me start to think because you know one of the biggest reasons that Keeping Hemp exists, you know, Southern Hemisphere exists, is to create industry for um, for our communities. Right? So you hear me saying a lot about the Keep It Hemp community. You'll hear me saying a lot about me teaching people. Or, if, I'm sorry, for those of you who have not heard uh, this voice um, or seen this face, my name is Lorenzo McNulty, co-owner of Keep It Hemple at keepithemple.com. You are now tuned into the Keep It Hemple Instagram Live. And today we're talking about constructing industry and better yet, building legacy through cannabis. Um, so I get these phone calls, I do consultations and stuff like that, right? So people call me all the time and they're, they're all over the place. All over the place from, hey, I've been doing this for X amount of years, I'm trying to incorporate the business model, how do I retail, how do I, you know, profit margin out, operational cost, expense, and those kind of things out their business, right? So that they can, if you can't measure it, you can't scale it. Um, but they're all over the world and they're all over the place in that too. And I get the calls and people are like, hey, um, I want to know everything there is to know about cannabis. I want to know everything there is to know about the business of cannabis. And for me, that's a challenging question to ask uh, or to answer for you guys, and to make you feel to make you feel the way that you think you want to feel, right? So I want to I want to kind of debunk some things here and help you understand that many of the people who are talking to you about getting into cannabis, uh, many of the people who are uh, hosting hosting even the webinars, and they got a lot of webinars. And some of you probably spent 25 grand to go out to Vegas and see those webinars. But the important part for you to understand, um, and this is just keeping Hempel soapbox. This is my soapbox. So this is uh, probably not to the liking of many many people who are in this business. But many of the people are getting taught from a, a capitalistic standpoint. 
Um, you know exactly what I'm talking about when I say the word cannabis, when I say, when I put it together with cannabis industry, or I say a word like dispensary, and if you are a business person, oftentimes you're thinking about how much money you can make from this thing. And I'm gonna tell you a story about uh, one of our first distributors, uh, who is no longer a distributor of ours, we just, we grew apart, we, we found different ways. Um, upon our entering our first distribution agreement with, with some people, we didn't realize, um, you know, we're, we're about our community. Everything we do, we run past you guys. You guys see, you know, the garden is behind this wall right here. We'll go take a look at it if you guys want to see the, the flowers. Um, those are some lights. For those of you guys who need some lights for your grill, we got quite a few excess lights lying around. Um, anyway, capitalistic point of view, you're getting that information. Most of our stuff has been about community, right? Um, that's why uh, we want to be transparent. We want to be as transparent as we possibly can. I mean, this is this is the inception of your face mask, right? Your skincare, uh, your CBD oils, um, your pre-rolls, you name it, it starts here, right? It is very hands-on, handcrafted from here. Shout out to Timo. Uh, Timo grows. Um, he, he's the other grower. Uh, in here, and he's he's taught me a lot, and we share a lot of knowledge and growing. But anyway, anyway, hands on coming out of that. Most people don't have that uh, because they enter this business from a, a stage of capitalism. Capitalism has. I was going to share a story with our first distributor, so let's talk about that first. So our first distributor relationship, we go in, we're bright eyed, we're bushy tailed, we put our products in the hands of somebody. Um, who was up and coming, you know, ambitious, uh, um, aspiring to uh, be in the space of CBD, right? People didn't know about cannabis, you know, being the mother of CBD. They, they didn't correlate those things, right? So I was sounding like a crazy person telling people the science from day one. Anyway, fast forward. Um, thank you to our first distributor for helping us highlight um, and identify one of these things in our agreements, right? So when you when you grow a product, when you spend this much time with your product, the last thing that you want is for someone to add something to it or take something away from it, right? You ever go to a really fine restaurant? And um, shout out to uh, the James Beard award-winning restaurants out there, guys who are in the culinary. Shout out to our chefs who are making edibles and, and um, infused meals, but you ever go to a place and they they deliver you this this I don't know if you're vegan or whatever you are but in my case they deliver a steak right and I always say chef's choice tell me what the chef feels is his best way to prepare this steak I don't want anything extra right and it, to add something extra kind of insults the chef because the chef is like man you're degrading my product my product right you're degrading my product that's how I feel <laughs> so to find out um, so to find out that our standard wasn't being transferred into uh, the business distribution or that distribution uh, member, I was very disheartened. But again, I understood, right? Because you could take you could take this plant and then you can um, make some distillate, right? You can make some CBD oil, um, and then you can cut that CBD oil to heaven's whatever, right? You see the article in Forbes that said that about 75, excuse me, I think it was about 85%, uh, percent. somebody correct me, 85% of CBD companies or hemp companies, cannabis companies have mislabeled or misrepresentation of what the contents are in that bottle, right? And so I, I jumped into capital, capitalism because, hey, hey, um, because cannabis, cannabis has been that business, you know, underground, we're just now starting to talk about it, but it has been a very capitalistic business. And so the behaviors in this business the behaviors in this business have, have reflected that capitalistic mentality. And you, I mean, I can tell you about people being sick. I can tell you about people um, experiencing CBD oil from other sources and finding themselves, you know, the last thing we want to do is turn people off from cannabis, right? We have been in the dark for quite some time growing this medicine and, and helping people. Shout out to my sprinkler going off all right on time. But um, we've been helping people with this kind of thing. So the last thing that we want to do is have someone have a negative experience with CBD, cannabis, whatever derivative of the plant that you are encountering, and then turn it off, right? And then go back to traditional um, pumping yourself full of opioids, steroids, and, 
and other things like that, right? Deteriorating your livers and your kidneys even further. So, so it is a big, 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 big thing that our industry remains um, to the standard. So if you've taken a look at Keep It Hempel's website lately, you'll see that we're talking directly to that point right now. Um, as, if you've heard me speak on any at any of my conferences, if you've been in the Cultivation Academy, if you've been anywhere, I'm speaking three things. There's three topics that you're always going to hear me talk about, right? And that is education, innovation, and cultivation, right? To a higher degree, to a higher standard. And we're going to create a higher standard one plan at a time. <laughs> so. We, we get these guys in here and you know they don't know very much about cannabis they don't know very much about anything but they know that they can they know profit margins they know if they if they buy oil from us that is medicinal grade and they cut it ten times you know they can increase the amount of capital that they do right so that turned us off to even going through distribution purposes because our end user we assume from here all the way through the flower phase we assume that you have a compromised immune system so if I know that and then know that you are um, adding something or taking something away from us, curating this thing the way that we do it, then I can't allow you to, distri uh, to distribute the Keep It Apple brand. Uh, our names, our names are on it, right? Everything we built in our community is attached to that, right? I can't go, uh, one of, one of uh, our, our lupus clients, right, then get something through you because they need it and they get it fast. Uh, through you, you're closer than having me ship it to them. They come there and they have a negative impact with that. Um, that's on us. That's on me for allowing you to continue to do what you're doing, um, knowing that it's a detriment to our community. So I say that capitalism thing to say that Keep It Hempel is doing something a little bit different. And it is community-based, and that's why it's a profit share model. Um, I believe that if, if everybody is able to get a slice of the pie, right? So you'll hear this in this cannabis community and people will sell you on that kumbaya thing, but this is a really dark uh, business when it's, and it's coming to light. So people are getting to see what's happening in this otherwise um, very, very negatively um, stigma business. And so there are some practices. I come from the business of coaching world and development world. So some of the things that are standard for me weren't standard in here, right? There was no standard. Um, I often joke about people growing in chicken houses and people growing, and I love chicken houses. I love the structure of chicken houses. There's, there's just a lot of prep work you have to do to grow clean product in there. Some people skip that. Um, people do that. And you know, I don't get on here pointing out anybody's businesses or anything like that, but we take wellness seriously. We take your wellness seriously. You should take your wellness seriously. As um, as one of the few, the few people or the few members of our community here growing cannabis, um, oftentimes we are the People, people know we grow the dopest flower around. They, they know that. You know, you know it, right? You see it. You see it. We're gonna go out to the flower bay and check out what we got going on um, before I get out of here today. But people know it. They want it. They like it. They know that it's clean. They know that they can give it to their mom. They know that they can give it to their dog. You know that that's one of those things. So um, just, just be mindful of where you are getting your stuff and and. By all means, get into the cannabis business. By all means, find a way, whether you're investing, whether you're growing, you're making edibles, you're weaving, weaving shirts, this is not a hemp shirt, I normally have one on, but get into the, the cannabis industry um, and, and start to think about the, the legacy that you wanna create and and how, how you wanna go about creating that. We say one plan at a time. <laughs> the Real Housewife of Cannabis. Look, I watch your videos all the time. Yep, yep, I do, I do. I just love the name, The Real Housewife of Cannabis. I watch, I like to see them. <laughs> um, we're just sitting here cloning today. It's a pretty slow day. We actually got ahead in the garden uh, this, Yesterday, yesterday we got ahead in the garden, so we don't have a lot. 
going on. So that's a good time to chill, talk to you guys, and and get in here with my plant babies because this is some good time. Look at this is the bouquet. I'm giving people these bouquets. If this shows up on your door at uh, the holiday season, you know where this came from. <laughs> I look the whole beaker and everything, right? Because it's, you know, nerd, whatever. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for sharing the content. Um, like this, this, this business has me running so many different places. I wish that I could be sitting here doing this way more. I am a gardener by heart. I love, 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 love plants. Some of you guys have probably seen my, my trees at the house. Um, but I love plants. That's what I do. I don't know. <laughs> oh, before I forget, happy birthday, Marines. You look good for 245. Semper Fi, be safe. Make sure you are celebrating safely. By all means, turn all the way up. By all means, but be safe. We need you. We need you here. All right, so my first cup is empty. I've got my bouquet. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. What's going on, Stormgate? I got my bouquet. My bouquet is about to go here. You ready? We're going to drop down a level, and we're going to see if I can turn my camera around. Yep, so these guys are going to go down here on, on this end. Um, I should have about 16 in there. If I don't have 16, it's pretty close. You've never seen a cannabis plant in real life. <laughs> oh, you know what? When the laws open up in North Carolina and they allow me to teach you guys hands-on cultivation again, when, when it's safe enough for me to disclose where our grow location is, I will, uh, I'll, I'll have people coming in. That, that's my thing. I'm an educator again, education, innovation, cultivation. about that age 15 15 first experience stepfather's little sash box out in the back and that funky little smell I was just wait curiosity got the best of me and I had seen too much TV <laughs> but it was a baby uh, I can't get roots on the clones definitely gonna have to come to the class and I, I will um, show you some strategies so as a matter of fact I happen to have a handy dandy bunch of clones right here um, so I will take one of these and I'll show you what to do in your garden. Um, I put a video out, I think it was a, I can't remember if it was in class. So some of you guys are a part of the Cultivation Academy and you're getting updates different times than the people who are getting it live. I have to spend more time over there because you got live plants. So in this plant, I want you to pay attention to a couple of things, all right? One is this leaf here that leaf you see how the edges of that leaf are trimmed you see that right so now everybody tends to know that they need to do that to their clones but they don't know why and I'm gonna share with you why the after effort after we cut through right um, so here many people so this one has a really flat flat uh, trim because she was on she was on the branch just like this right she's looking for light she was connected to the mother branch or the primary branch right there and I just cut her as close to that primary branch as I possibly could but for those of you who are cloning um, this is a practice some people like to take their their scissors and score and all of that kind of stuff um, I clone just like this this is this is good for me but another good practice is to cut at about a 45 degree angle and hey if you're like me and geometry isn't your specialty a little angle is good, right? So just a slight angle, right? Um, and what that does, now, when you cut, another important thing while I'm talking is I'm getting her to contact that water again. Um, because if air gets into the chute, then you're gonna kill your plant. But it does, 
it, she gives you a little bit of time um, to do that. But I was talking about these parts of the leaves, right? So this, this leaf here, I was talking about your leaf. And you cut that off because your plant is doing what's called transpiration, transpir, transpiration, right? And what's happening is you've got the top part of your leaf and you've got the bottom part of your leaf. This is how your, your plant exchanges um, air. We'll make it simple. It exchanges air on the bottom of that leaf. And so as, as she is attached to her mother's thought, right, she is bringing in, she's constantly, uh, well, it's more like this. So it goes down from the leaf up to the, the bottom of the leaf, right? Um, so as she's doing that, she's constantly doing that. So when we trim this, that tells her to stop, right? So stop, and then I want her to focus on root development, right? So I'm doing all of that to tell her to stop and focus on putting growing roots out of that shoot. Uh, the other thing that's kind of in the same vein of that is you'll hear people talk about topping plants. Topping plants tells the plant to stop and reroute its energy. That's all it's doing. So when you your plant's growing long and tall and skinny, and you know what? Y'all want to go to the tent, the veg tent? I'm going to get over here. Uh, <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. No doubt. Um, is, that, is that good? Did that help? Did that help anybody? I was going to go to the veg tent just because I want to. I will, I will talk about this thing all day. I want everybody to grow some of the dopest flowers and the most potent, turfed out bud that you could possibly grow for medicine, right? For medicine. Shout out to Mississippi. Um, Mississippi and South Dakota for medical cannabis, Arizona, New Jersey, Montana. Arizona, New Jersey, Montana came on board with recreational. I might be moving to Montana, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that helped, man. I'm glad that helped a lot. Uh, for, for other growers, if you're not following us on uh, Facebook, the Cultivation Academy over on Facebook, a lot of good information over there. A lot of a lot of those things like tweaking your your clone game. Like there's often some small stuff that you can do that'll have your, your clone game crazy, man. So here, let's take a look at what we got going on here. Um, I hope this water does not come on, but you, I'm starting to move them out. Um, but there's some really really nice roots in there. Uh, as I did that, I have to also provide you with a safety um, a safety tip it's not good for your roots to see light um, also the root development happens in the dark and if you can you want to keep this so if you have to leave your clones in a cup for a day uh, you want to make sure that it's darkness and they'll they'll actually already start producing those roots before you even put them into your cloner you don't want to do that if you're using a rabbit rooter or a, a rock wool cubes right rock wool cubes they will they will tear the roots off as you're trying to get them in there but if you're using a broke down rock wool cube medium you could just kind of gently surround them around those those starter roots and they will take off they will take off for sure man thank you thank you what's going on Oregon did I tell you I was out in um, Eugene Oregon I was out there with a farmer and before I I'm looking for this uh, this place out in these mountains and you know Oregon is gorgeous by the way if you live in Oregon and haven't been to Oregon you definitely need to go to Oregon get out to this place right and I'm landing Eugene Oregon I'm landing and I just take off out of the the hotel and just trying to drive around the city see what's going on and I promise you there are like cannabis plants like you know shrubs in the front yards over here in North Carolina so I am completely like this is my spirit place I need to be here <laughs> so shout out to Oregon for moving that that legislation along uh, I think that they've moved um, some other some other things along psilocybin um, um, is, is LSD did LSD fall in the approved items out in Oregon I know that there's a lot of a lot of research happening for, with some of the I hate to use the term drugs we're not talking about drugs um, but just some medicinal avenues are being explored, and I, for one, am happy. <laughs> so now I'm going to focus on getting these clones into their designated spaces on the cloner. And let's see if 
Now you are in the cave. You are in the cave. I can't believe that you've never seen cannabis plants in real life. That's really kind of um, trippy. That's trippy. Make sure that when you're in your grow, you turn your workout on on your watch because you're definitely burning some calories in this bad boy. Um, it's hot sometimes, you know, it's about 70 degrees, but that's hot enough to make you start sweating. In here, um, a grow tip is if there's anything else that you can be prepping, if there's anything that you can be um, let run independently without you being there, you, these are some of the times that you want to do that. So I know it's going to take me about 15 minutes to get these clones in. So I got 15 minutes to let that water run out there before I have a flood. Hydroponics. Hydroponic cultivation um, is, is, is dope. High risk reward kind of business, but I don't think you can get any cleaner. Um, other than organic living soil, I am a proponent of living soil. You just heard the... Uh, the sprayer come on, so don't be alarmed. And what we have our clones under is just some, some uh, these T5s, just T5s. We've got a, got a grate underneath them. And yeah, yeah, they like it in here. The humidity is, could be higher, right? We're at, We range between 60 and 80 percent humidity in here. Uh, clones like that. Uh, your vegetative plants like a, a higher humidity, so you just want to make sure that you're you're into that. And these are look, these little guys here are just little um, foam little circles, cylinders with a little crease in them, and. Uh, they let the, the nutrient-rich water, so there's water in here. It's about 10 gallons of water in here. And that 10 gallons of water is, is not loaded with nutrients because they don't have uh, developed roots. Most of them going in, they don't have developed roots. So they are uh, not going to be able to uptake nutrients anyway. But we do use some, some small, some small, very, very watered down nutrients. Uh, that cup of water that they were sitting in was was in some uh, some nutrient water as well, just to just to help. They will grow like weeds, uh, but they do need a little help. And when you help them, though, look out. Who is that? Who just joined? Uh, hypnotic, uh, the Real Housewife of Cannabis. I also hope that these laws in North Carolina change soon. Hypnotic and the Cedary Inc. The Cedary Inc. Where are you located? What you guys got going on out there? What's your prize seeds? What kind of seeds? I've got a group of growers that are looking for a, a good seed source over at the Cultivation Academy. And I would love to be able to recommend a supplier uh, of seeds, so let me know where you're at. Do you ship? Do you take PayPal? Alright, so that is 14. I did take 16. Alright. So, because we have more than enough clones and, and you you often cannot have more than enough clones. I got two that are left over, and I'll see if I can make a little bit more space for them. But if not, we got plenty of this genetic. Ooh. Excuse me, and that's how we clone. <laughs> this 
was that good? Was that a good, I don't know how long we've been on this thing, but I hope that it was informative. I hope that you picked up something here that you hadn't picked up before you got here. Um, don't forget, the, uh, the the marquee hoodies are on the site. The, the website looks beautiful now, guys. Oh, man. Oh, man. The website looks so nice now. So when you get a chance, go over and check out keepithimple.com. That is keepithimple.com. If you're on, well, you are on Instagram. Take a look at the, the bio. The link is in there. There's a ton of good stuff in that link. That's how we um, present to you so you can find all of the resources there. If you don't want to do that and you're just online, the website is gorgeous. Uh, there's an opportunity to message directly with us. So if you have some questions, we can answer those questions for you. Skincare. I am blown away by the success of the skincare. Shout out to Queen City Beauty Group. Um, shout out to the Charlotte. Go go check out the Charlotte. She's got some some fire stuff happening here in Charlotte as well. Um, if you are in the the beauty wellness space and you're looking for an additional product to stock on your shelf, produced, uh, formulated locally, it's grown here, right? It starts from here. You can see the future of skincare in my hand right now, right? You can see it in this 200 milliliter beaker. <laughs> but it's been doing super, 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 super things out there. Um, the it, your, your clients, your clients are telling us so. Your clients enjoy it. We enjoy it. We enjoy making it for you, bringing it to you. Um, I have some seats. If anybody want to try them out, just DM. Yo, uh, hit Pound House 220 if you if you're looking for some seeds. Um, what kind of seeds you got there, Pound House? At the Real Housewife of Cannabis. I thank you for sharing. I will check out the website for sure, for sure. Stop by keepinghimple.com, check out the new website. Let me know what you think about it. Um, I said hoodies, I said skincare. Oh, the Charlotte. And this, <laughs> I'm not gonna get too deep into it, but we've got something edible and delicious that is on the way. And look, we did the sampling the other day. We did the sampling of this new edible and um, I mean, it's coming directly from Costa Rica. We are we are engaged with the farmers who are uh, producing the cacao. You already know what it is, but they're producing it. We're very, very, very in tune with what's going on. You know how we like clean things, and you know how I personally don't like recommending things that cannot be used in a weakened autoimmune system. So get ready. The Charlotte, she's about to blow up the spot. Uh, she's already got the skincare over there in her line as well. Uh, so that's Marquee, that's Face Mask, that's the Charlotte. I think that's it. <laughs> you like my shirt? Oh, for sure, for sure. You Hey, go back and take, uh, take a look at the beginning of this. We're talking about building industry. We're talking about uh, in our communities, building industry, and um, there's some pretty good stuff there. Uh, stay tuned, stay tuned, stay tuned. But we're gonna go to the garden first. You ready? This is my last stop. I get to take a look at my, my plant babies before um, I get out of here. Uh, so this is just some of the clones that we got in tent B. Oh. Anyway, that's tent B. We'll take a look at tent A. Tent A, I'm gonna show you something pretty cool that only growers will know. Um, growers know we got a few different strains in here. These are going to be the next ones to go into flower. You see how big they are. We'll take them from here. Um, and we'll go put them in the flower bay that I'm going to show you here in a second. There you go. <laughs> so this plant has something very, very, very unique happening. Right? And I'm just going to show you a comparison. This is a different genetic. Um, I'm going to show you a comparison. You see this one? This is a robust genetic. She is very very happy with her environment you see how bushy she is and all of those colas man she'll probably be about four feet tall after the end of this thing but this plant this plant is doing something called revegging you see the noticeable difference these leaves here right um, the normal your normal leaf looks like that right so what happens <coughs> Or does anybody know why this is happening? All right, so this plant is doing what's called re-vegging. So, like I said, these plants are gonna go out to the flower bay and we have it in stages. And sometimes we, we 
get so overzealous we're putting plants out there and we haven't looked at the schedule you look at the schedule and oh my goodness that's the last of our genetics that we're flowering out and so we got to go take them <laughs> and it's safe to clone uh, they say up to two weeks I like within that first week of it going into that flower cycle and this is for those are uh, photo plants not auto flowering uh, cannabis plants this is not for auto flowering cannabis plants your auto flowers will do this though because they're just programmed to go into flower either way these plants are photo plants so we tell them when they're going to go to flower <coughs> excuse me but what's happening is it's going into the reveg state so where it can start back the growth and development of bud sites and there you go katie's farm you got it you got it uh let me get some glasses because these lights here require a bit of ppe and i think i have left them somewhere else all right so we got some old glasses these are terrible these are terrible for your eyes but um so these were the ones that we uh, we cloned from. Uh, again, they, they came out yesterday, so we, we shouldn't have any of those problems. But <laughs> I wanna show you something really cool. These are the ones that are about to come down and we're gonna oil it all out. Uh, we've already got some plans for it. Uh, look at this table, let's take a look at this one trying to give you a little covering so you can you can see but here is where the magic happens this is where the magic happens oh you got an avocado tree I put my avocado tree uh, hold on that's that's a near and dear subject to my heart so I put my avocado tree um, her name was Ava and she was about three years old I kept her in the house for three years and I put her outside thinking, she's a tree. She needs to go outside. North Carolina weather killed her. And I am still sad about it. Um, but back to the cannabis. <laughs> uh, so here we are. Let's, uh, let's see the medicine. So that's all your CBD, your CBN, CBG, all of those fancy little acronyms that everybody's excited about, yet we're still trying to figure out how they are impacting our wellness and our bodies. But, this is it. And that's the business. <laughs> Y'all like that? Um, we got some new uh, LEDs in here as well. Just kinda, um, <clears throat> These are better on my eyes. The LEDs, one, they're better on your eyes. I know the paint wearing GA. Learned my lesson the hard way too. Right? Right? I uh, It hurt my heart. Hurt my heart. I lost Ava. She was three years old. <laughs> um, but these are in our rotation. So they'll be, they'll be coming down. The LEDs, we're really testing them out. That's why you only see these bars here. Um, we're testing them to see if they'll produce we know that we're going to get a little bit of loss from the uh the double end hps's that we got over there um that and that thousand watt this these two are 930 watts each so we got two of them over this table oh man i we spend a lot of time a lot of time in here uh shout out to timo grows he's he's the other grower in here and um the guy's brilliant when it comes to this particular plant and um yeah you can tell right the results the results tell you the plants tell you if they're happy but that is the end of our tour today i appreciate you guys hanging in there with me as i got my clone babies and we checked on our teeny babies and yeah yeah next time i'm gonna see you guys next time <laughs> Thank you. Hey, you guys make this thing better. So thank you for tuning in and engaging with me. I really, really appreciate you.